here on NR92 Sports Recap. Um, so our own Kevin Marr, he went out onto the streets and um, he interviewed some Nate students and caught sure. them on a recording. So um, go ahead. You're yeah, no, I, I caught up with some students at lunchtime and uh, let's uh, hear what they uh, think about this weekend's game. So um, I guess we have uh, two Broncos and one Seahawks. Both, both predictions. I, I liked Hernandez. I liked how he said that he, he doesn't think that it's going to be a close one, and it's in favor of Denver. Yeah, that's, that's funny. I mean, obviously they got best offense, but I guess the best defense is going to be most well, That's coming from a 49ers fan. So yeah, I'm, just, I'm, just throwing that, <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. That's true. So we're going to move on. Uh, there's another big thing going on uh, this weekend, the NFL Honors um, the best players, top players, top players. Their awards show, I guess, uh, tomorrow during my birthday. So happy birthday, happy Jay! Birthday. I just did that for the. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look a day over fifteen. <laughs> That's what I hope to hear. Yes. So um, yeah, we're just gonna run through our our picks for what, four or five of them. Four or five of the important ones. I think we have the MVP. We have a uh, coach of the year, offensive player of the year, defensive player of the year, uh, rookie of the year, offensive rookie, and defensive rookies of the year. So um, for the MVP, I don't know how much discussion we have about. Is there anybody else? We're gonna do our picks, though. Let's do our picks. Let's throw the picks out. Yeah, uh, Jay, you start us off. Uh, I think uh, for the MVP, it should be Jamel Jones. <laughs> no, it's it's gotta be <laughs> Peyton Manning. You know, like why? Nobody why touched him. He broke so many records. He he won just what 13, 13 games. Broncos won, and it was basically offense. He got 55 touchdowns. It was all right. offense. Yeah. Pretty much. Like yeah. it was, and he got 5,500 yards over that or whatever. And I just don't think 50, anybody. 55 touchdowns or yeah. something like that. 54. Or something. It was. It's gonna be pretty tough for any quarterback moving forward to come close to. To it. top those numbers. Yeah. I mean, it's just. I know he mentioned that uh, Tom Brady is going to do it next year, but I think even for Tom Brady and the Patriots, uh, that's pretty tough to match uh, what he did this year. It's it was quite the. Uh, you know, enjoyment to see, you know, Manning just crushing those records. As a fan, you know, whether you don't have to be a Broncos fan. Oh, yeah. You know. Uh, Cap, what's your pick? <laughs> well, I think I, I, I just gave it away, but I think I'm going to go uh, off the board with Manning here. So <laughs> Off the board? Eli? Off the Off the board. Eli Manning? Which Manning was oh, oh, <laughs> i I got to change that now. Yes, Eli. Oh, no, Peyton. Okay, <laughs> And why is that? Michael? No? No? I think you already explained why. Yeah, he did. He uh, like, yeah Peyton Manning, it's unanimous. Uh, breaking all those offensive records. Uh, pretty much dominating every defense he, he went up against this year. Not many guys, not many teams uh, could stop him, so it's unanimous. Peyton Manning all the way. Awesome. And he's not, he's not young either. No. I, I mean, he's doing it. Oh, towards... guy doing this. Exactly. It's, it's... We say old guy, but he's like 36. I know, he's like, th yeah, but 37. For NFL standards. Turning 38 this year, yeah. For NFL standards, pretty old. So we're going to go to the next one. That um, it, it seems like this is talked about a lot. It's going to be pretty tough. It's called the uh, Coach of the Year Award. Nice talk. This one's a, a good topic. Well, then how about like you start us one. off there, Mike? I'll start us off. You know, it was, it was close for me. It was really close for me. I, I wanted to say Andy Reid yeah. because what he did with the Chiefs was unbelievable. 
Like you take the last place Kansas City Chiefs last year and you bring them into the playoffs with an aw- like an awesome team. You know, their defense was stacked. They just couldn't uh they just couldn't get the in playoffs they couldn't well, first off their their uh star player was hurt in the playoffs, so that's why it was it just train wrecked at the start there against the Colts. But uh yeah, it, my pick for coach of the year is definitely it's going to be Pete Carroll. Pete it Carroll? has it has to be Pete Carroll. Um, definitely because uh, the Seahawks made it to the final, and uh, yeah, I think I think no no other coach really touched Pete Carroll this year. No. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah, actually, I, I think you made some great points there. I was, I always cheer for the underdog, so I mean, it was really great to see what Reed did with uh, the Chiefs. I think that you know, going from the situation he was in in Philadelphia to you know, a brand new clean slate with the Chiefs, who weren't expected to do a whole lot, and they uh, exceed ex- expectations. But yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Pete Carroll. Um, not just because you know it's the Seahawks, but I think that you know what he's been able to do, uh, you know, with the, the whole team and just the continuous, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think, of, um, the growth over the I last few years. I'm not. I'm not just thinking. I know it's just for this year, but the continuous growth that they've had over year after year, and they've just got stronger and stronger. And I think. You know, you can't go wrong with the, the one thing. Girl. The one thing I like about the the Seahawks offense is that they don't have any like huge stars. Like you don't see no. any except obviously Marshawn Lynch. But I'm talking about like the receiving core. You don't see uh, star receivers playing in that receiving core. They're just they're just reliable players that can make plays wherever, whenever, and wherever on the field. And uh, I I think Pete Carroll really maximized that this year. Yeah, I mean on the on the receiving end for the Seahawks, you got Baldwin. You know, that's you know the biggest name I would say. You know, from a receiving corps end. But you know, yeah, I think you know with a team that doesn't have a whole lot of stars, you know, from an offensive uh, point of view, I think that you know they were able to really you know uh, use what they have and you know maximize their potential, which is you know something that uh, you know takes you know. A great coach and a great, you know, strategy, you know, to uh, implement. For De- sure, definitely, definitely. Jay? Pete Carroll was instrumental in that in their playoff run to the Super Bowl. You know, so it's your pick. It's not me, Pete Carroll. It's not Pete I'm Carroll. Right off the board, I'm gonna go to uh, Carolina Panthers. Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera. Man, also a great pick. Also pick. a great pick. Just because when you're talking Carolina Panthers, you didn't talk about them making the playoffs. No. Let alone getting a first round bye. Especially at the at the beginning when they started off as bad as they did, mm-hmm. you know? And then that offense just started clicking. Cam Newton started finding receivers, and it, it turned out really well for them. Yeah. They played so well, and a lot of credit goes to uh, Ron Rivera. So it was, a, it was a great run. Lost to the Niners in the Divisionals, but it was a great run nonetheless. So the, uh, the next one we got is uh, Offensive Player of the Year. Now, this it's not the same as an MVP, because obviously you need to do either, either defensive or offensive, but... It's, it should be pretty unanimous in my mind. I think uh, I'll start us off, if you guys yeah, don't mind. Do it. I'm going to go uh, definitely Kansas City Chiefs running back, Jamal Charles. The guy led receptions out of any running back in the league, and uh, he was he was lights out doing it, man. You can't stop him out of the backfield in the flat when he's dished the ball. He's just too fast. No. He's going to find any hole. And uh, that's why my pick uh, for Offensive Player of the Year goes to Jamal Charles. Yeah. Well, I'm going to stick with who I had for... The MVP. I think Manning. You just can't ignore the stats and the records he broke this year. Uh, I mean, that's not to discredit you know anyone else that's had you know a fa- fantastic year like he just mentioned. But I think with Manning this year, you just you just gotta give it to him. Uh, it's that's a, just it's that's an awesome pick. You I can't thought, go wrong with Peyton Manning. I thought you were gonna go with Peyton Manning. That's why I said you know it would be unanimous. No. It had to be. I was thinking you know Jamal Charles. Sure, he's a great receiver out of the backfield. Absolutely. I wanted to change it up a bit too. One of the biggest key factors that they made the playoffs was Jamal Charles, but you, you can't give it to anybody else but Peyton Manning. He was, he was unbelievable this year. There's no other words for it. He was unbelievable. Should be interesting in a night tomorrow night to see if our picks actually are what they are. I'm going to be so pumped if Jamal Charles is back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hear on Monday. So yeah, now we got Defensive Player of the Year, and this could go whichever way. Whichever there were so many defensive players that were just unstoppable, unmovable, un, you know, there's a bunch of words that are defensive. So, um, <laughs> Jay starts off. All right, so I'm going to go with the uh, San Francisco 49ers, uh, Navarro Bowman. Linebacker. When you think of San Francisco 49ers, you think of 
Patrick Willis, and you think of Justin Smith. But Navarro Bowman came into his own this year. He led the team in sacks, he led the team in tackles, and you could not get by those two, Patrick Willis and Navarro Bowman. You cannot get by them. Marshawn Lynch was the only one who could really, you know, get by them. I just think Navarro Bowman came into his own this year, you know, he just, there's something about him. He looks like a superstar in this league now. I'm, I'm just really upset that he got hurt. I know, last like, play, the last play of the and year. And now it's next season's in doubt, you know, that's that's really unfortunate, man. It sucks. It yeah. really sucks. What's your pick? I am going with Robert Mathis. Uh, he led the You like Robert Mathis. That's an off the board pick. I like that. I like that one. He, he led the league in sacks with nineteen and a half, uh forced fumbles eight. I I think that, you know, he's someone that, you know, I definitely would, you know, put my vote in for. So definitely one of my team. Yeah, absolutely, and you know, playing for the Colts and stuff. I mean, he uh, he was definitely a standout on that team, and I think that's uh, you know he's definitely a great pick. But again, you know, there's a lot of good players this year that had mm. fantastic career years. So, you know, it could go either way, right? Michael, uh, you know what? I got uh, I got a pick for you guys, and it comes from uh, the championship making team, the <laughs> Seattle Seahawks, and I got three letters for you guys: L. Or <laughs> B. I'm the best corner in the game! LB! Yeah, my pick's uh, definitely the Shermanator, Richard Sherman. You know, like, you... That's awesome. You don't get better. Like, as you said, you don't get a better corner in the league. You don't. No. And uh, he can cover anybody. Anybody you put on him, he will. He can cover. And uh, he's got he's got reach. He's got speed. He's got, like, he's got sight. He's, he's got, got everything, everything you want. Exactly. He'll find anything across the, uh, across the field, so... My pick is definitely Richard Sherman of the Seattle Seahawks. Awesome. I'm glad we didn't pick the same player. No. This time. I like...